Hello guys, welcome back to Premier League Predictions. As always, I am joined by Sophie. Sophie, set us a like target. Let's go big. 3,106. Blimey. Yeah. It's a big target. Well, you know what to do. Hit that like button, guys. Help us hit 3,106 likes. And if you're new around here, please make sure to subscribe to get more Premier League content. It takes two seconds, so get involved. The scores from our predictions last week, I just beat Sophie by one point. But because she did so well in game week one, I'm a bit far behind still. Um, but without any further ado, let's jump into the predictions for the third week. And it's the final week before the international break. We start with Arsenal versus Brighton, Sophie. Two teams that have picked up six points so far this season. Um, let's start with Arsenal. I did predict them to win the league this season and so far so good, but it is early on. Great win against Aston Villa, I must say. And that double save from Raya, you know, the, the one that came down off the bar and he and then, saved yeah, it. Got up, yeah. Unbelievable. A great win there against Arsenal's bogey team from last season but credit needs to go to Brighton as well they got the late winner against Manchester United which did give you that 2-1 prediction correct in the last minute um Sophie this is difficult two it's teams difficult. two teams that are doing very well you've got to fancy Arsenal though because surely you know if they're going for the title they've got to keep winning yeah um I know it's very very early on in the season but when you've got other teams like Man City you can't afford to be dropping points especially in your home games. So for me, it's not like a must win because it's very early on in the season, but I, did, I don't know, it feels like they should win this. Not a must win, but a should win. Yes, I agree with that. Um, I would love to back Brighton to get something, but oh, I just, like you said, Arsenal need to win. Arsenal two, Brighton one. Yeah, I'm going for the same. And that's purely because I think Brighton are looking like a strong team this season. I'm a bit gutted for their new sign-in, Matt O'Reilly, who's just been confirmed he's going to be having surgery after the cup tie injury on his debut. Bless yeah. him, poor guy. So I thought it's got to him, but ultimately Brighton have made other good signings and they're looking good this season, but they're coming up against Arsenal, who at home, you've got to fancy them. And I agree with your scoreline, 2-1. 2-1, yeah. And like you say, they did lose that player, but they did win that cup tie heavily against Crawley, which does need a mention. Um, so we're both back in Arsenal 2-1. Share your thoughts on that game. Next up, Sophie, it's a big game for Brentford and Southampton because Brentford, could they make it two wins in the league here? Or can Southampton get their first point of the season? And they haven't even scored in the Premier League yet. Um, they were both involved in Carabao Cup games in midweek. Brentford won 1-0 at Colchester. Southampton won 5-3 at Cardiff. Um, Oh, Southampton have got to start getting some points because they lost to 10 men Newcastle. They lost at home to Forest. If they lose this, it's, it's been a great. bad start. Yeah. Um, but I just think Brentford, with that Premier League quality, will get it done. I just think there is a bit of a golfing class here and we are starting to see that glass ceiling between the Championship and Premier League. Mm -hmm. Brentford 2-0. Yeah, I know it's going to be a long season for Southampton, but I thought they would start with, I don't know, a bit more promising performances slightly in the Premier League obviously they got that good win over Cardiff midweek but they left a couple of those goals till late and they kept allowing Cardiff back into the game I know they did have a weaker squad out but ultimately in the Prem as well I think their performances have been below par and some of their key players aren't up to it at the moment so they need a few of them to step it up do I think this is the game for it no I think it is going to take a little bit longer for them to start putting some good performances together so I agree with you, I think Brentford are going to win, but I might give Southampton one goal. I think the goals in the Carabao Cup, they might have found some of their shooting boots a little bit, but not enough. So 2-1 Brentford. 2-1, yeah. So we're both backing Brentford to win. You're giving Southampton their first goal of the season. Share your thoughts in the comments, guys. Let's go to Goodison next, Sophie. Everton take on AFC Bournemouth. Um, look, it has been a terrible start for Everton. We can't get away from that. They were battered by Brighton. They were battered by Tottenham. Um, they did beat Doncaster very heavily. So credit to them for doing that. But you should be. You know what I mean? It's mm. Premier League v League 2. Everton should be doing that. Um, this is a game where Everton could get their first point of the season. They're taking on Bournemouth, who've drawn their first two games. So both sides yet to win. 
I make Bournemouth slight favourites, if we're you, being honest. You've got to, to be honest. I just think they're more organised, mm. um, just probably a bit more quality as well. But it is at Goodison Park, so I wouldn't be surprised if Everton gets something. And I really hope they do. Can I just point out to the Everton fans, I don't have an agenda against Everton. I like Everton, they're a big club. But I don't think they're going to win. I'm going to go Everton 1, Bournemouth 2. I was tempted to say 2-1 Bournemouth as well, but do you know what? I might give Everton a point, okay. purely because Bournemouth have been a little bit draw-heavy in the Prem so far, yep. and Everton really need to fight for something now. I don't know whether the fans giving their players a bit of a talking to, let's say, at the train station, I don't know if that's going to work in their favour or work against them, I'm not sure. I, I personally, I don't think that's the right way to go about things, but ultimately, I, I understand the frustration as well. So... I'll give them a point. I'll say 1-1. One, 1-1, one. One, one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, share your thoughts down below, guys. I'm going for the Bournemouth win. Sophie's going for the draw. On to the next one, Sophie. Let's go to Portman Road as Ipswich Town take on Fulham. Sophie, for Ipswich, it's been a difficult start. Mm -hmm. They played Liverpool. They lost. It's not the end of the world. They played Man City. They lost 4-1. Which you predicted. Well I done. did predict yeah, that. Well I got done. my bonus point for that you one. Um, it's not the end of the world, though. If you lose those games, whatever. But it's at home to other teams that are in the bottom half you need to get your points against. And this would now be where if Ipswich lose, I would say, ah, OK, that's not, that's not good. It's not because good. This is, these will be the games that define their season and if they stay up. Um, they did also lose to Wimbledon in the Cup in midweek, which does need a mention. Yeah. Um, look, some Ipswich fans, I'm sure, will be like, let's just concentrate on the league. Yeah. But it's not a great look. Um, as for Fulham, they lost 1-0 to Man United. They beat Leicester 2-1. And they've also just beaten Birmingham in the Cup. So, decent little run. I think the Ipswich fans are going to be really up for this. Got to because be. they've got to get that first Premier League point or three points. Yeah. I just, I would love to back Ipswich here. I really would. I, I want mm -hmm. them to stay up. But as we keep saying, there is a golfing class. And I just don't think Fulham, uh, they're not going to roll over. But could Ipswich still beat them? I'm going to go for a draw. Okay. I'm going to go Ipswich 2, Fulham 2. I think it'd be a good game. Uh, but at least Ipswich get their first point. But I just don't, I don't want to go against Fulham. I think it's, it's I so hard. I can't go against Fulham. And I think even a draw in my eyes would be going against them at the moment. So I feel like I've got to back Fulham to win this one. Really? I, yeah, I do look at the squad and I will edge Fulham. I know it's at Portman Road and I fancy Ipswich to get more points there. But they have got a lot of new sign-ins. And I do think there is going to be a bit of a gelling period. And as you mentioned already, there is the visible golfing class between championship teams coming up and the Premier League teams that have been there a few seasons now. So I do fancy Fulham in this one, but I'm not going to say by much. I'm going to say 2-1. Yeah, and to be honest, I hope we're both wrong. I would love to see An Ips Ipswich win. win. Yeah. yeah, of course. You know, no one, no one wants to see the three teams that have come up Keep going, going back down, down. every boring. season. Yeah. It's so boring. Um, on to the next game, Sophie. It's another team that got newly promoted, Leicester City. They take on Aston Villa. And Leicester are the only team that's come up that have actually picked up a point so far. Mm. They drew 1-1 with Tottenham. They lost 2-1 away to Fulham. They've just beaten Tranmere in the Carabao Cup. They take on Aston Villa, Sophie, who got a good win against West Ham and then lost to Arsenal. Um, you make Aston Villa favourites, yeah. but I do wonder with it being at Leicester um, you know they've got their fans there they've got that draw against Tottenham when they were at home mm -hmm. and it's a bit of a derby Midlands derby could that maybe throw something up that we don't expect I don't think it'll be a walk in the park for Villa I wouldn't be surprised if Leicester get something a goal but I will back Villa just yeah um, I'm gonna go Leicester one Villa two I think it'll be a close game but I, I do think Villa have that edge about them that quality I mean, Villa do have that edge about them. They finished top four last season and they've still got a very, very good squad. And then again, you look at Leicester's squad and you think, surely Villa are going to win this one. But it's not always about that. As you mentioned, Leicester at home. Depends if their fans can get the place rocking, be the 12th man. Could they get something from this game? Maybe. But I'm not going to back it. I will give them a goal. But for me, it's going to end Villa 3-1. Villa 3-1. Yeah. yeah. Look, once again... 
I'd, I'd love to see newly promoted teams stay up, but God, it, it'd just be such a nightmare if all three come down just again. Back down. Yeah, hopefully not. Share your thoughts on Leicester versus Villa. Let's move on to the next game, Sophie, which is also a Midlands derby. Nottingham Forest take on Wolves in the Nuno derby. Um, Forest, as we've said, decent start. They drew with Bournemouth. They beat Southampton. They drew with Newcastle last night, but they lost on penalties. You were so close to getting I, your I, prediction. I said one one, and then I fancied them on penalties because they've got a good record. They but, do. Yeah, they were poor. Yeah. Four in the penalty shootout. So your prediction for the Carabao Cup was very close. Um, for anyone that didn't watch, Sophie said one-one, but Forest on penalties. Never mind. They've gone out. They can concentrate on the league. It would be amazing if they can have seven points after three games. And I do make them slight favourites against Wolves. Yes, Wolves have just beaten Burnley in the Carabao Cup, but last weekend they conceded six against Chelsea. Yeah. I think it will be low scoring. I'm going to go Nottingham Forest 1-0. I feel bad for not backing Forest because I didn't go for them last week and they got the win and you did call that. But I think it's Wolves' performances at times that I'm like, oh, do I go against them? If they turn up in this game like they did second half against Chelsea, Forest will win this. No issues. But... They did play well first half. They played well against Burnley as well midweek. So I'm going to go down the middle on this one. I'm going to say 1-1. One, 1-1? One. One, one. Yeah, I'm struggling to separate the two at the moment. Sitting on the fence. Yeah, a bit of a stalemate. Yeah. yeah. Okay, share your thoughts, guys. On to the next game, Sophie. We go to the London Stadium. It's West Ham United versus Manchester City. Um, West Ham, Sophie. Look, as good as they can be at times and as good as they were against Palace last week... Mm-hmm. This Man is Man City. It's a tough test. Yeah. yeah, and you know what? I mean, West Ham, what? They lost 2-1 to Villa. Nah, okay. But they beat Palace. They've just beaten Bournemouth in the Cup. If they got something here, we could start saying, well, that's a very good start, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, I, I don't know. I, I just think when we're competing against each other in predictions, you've got to play it safe. There's no yeah. point back in West Ham because although there's a well, chance they might win, yeah. um, you don't get a bonus point if they win. You know, yeah, for going for yeah. the underdog. Yeah. So, very sorry to the West Ham fans. I think you might have a good season. I've seen some good glimpses, but just because it's Man City, I'll say West Ham nil, Man City 2. Ooh, okay, I'm going to go for the same deficit. I'm going to say 3-1 Man City. Um, I do think West Ham are capable of getting a goal, possibly even a point. I think it might be a bit of a stretch to say going to get the win but what I've seen so far is I think they're more than capable of putting in a good performance against Man City ultimately it's Man City and when they get clicking they're a very very good side very good manager and I do struggle to go against them so as you said playing it safe but Man City 3-1 3-1 yeah um yeah West Ham fans as I said um apologies but you are playing Man City but um yeah I do feel like I do feel like with Man City if you're ever going to take points off them it's usually earlier in the season because yeah, they they, they just go for they it at coast the end of the, the, end of the day. It's yeah. just yeah and they're away from home control. here, so I'd love to see West Ham get something, but you've got to go for Man City. Right, on to the next one, Sophie. Chelsea versus Crystal Palace. Now, do you know what I was thinking? After Chelsea just won 6-2 against Wolves, I would not be surprised if they just go and lose this 1-0. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It would be a typical Chelsea result to yeah. be like, do you know what? They're, yeah, second half, they're really good. They're going to win this one easily, and then lose up 2-0. Yeah. You think, huh? Eh? What yeah. happened to them? Honestly, the Chelsea of last season was so hard to predict because yeah. one week you'd be like, I'm back in them. And then the next week you'd be like, I don't Not trust them. them. Yeah. yeah, so um, I'm just going to go with the narrative that Chelsea are going to be a bit more consistent this season. Yeah. Um, Palace, they've not picked up any points yet. Um, but they've shown they can score goals, especially against Norwich in the Carabao Cup. Mateta scored an overhead kick. Yeah, great finish that. Um, I've got to go for Chelsea, though. What they did against Wolves was amazing. Chelsea 2, Palace 1. I might go 3-1 Chelsea, actually. I'm going to chuck in an extra goal purely because if they can get Madueke firing again, I've not seen that enough from him. You know, that performance against Wolves, which was almost inspired after that um, Instagram post the night before. They've got Cole Palmer as well, who he started the season very strong. Like last game, a goal, three assists, solid stats. And 
I think he's more than capable of doing that again in this game. Crystal Palace are a very good team. I do like them. They've got good players. Yep. Love Mateta. As you mentioned, his finish midweek against Norwich. Great goal. But I think he's such a good player. Yeah, I'm going to say 3-1 Chelsea. I think there could be a few goals in this one, but I am going to lean towards the favourites again. Yeah, it makes sense. We're playing it safe. We don't want to yeah. let either person take advantage in the predictions early in the season. Um, right, on to the next one, Sophie. This could be an interesting game. We've got Newcastle versus Tottenham, and I just think this screams goals, surely. Um, over the last couple seasons, we've seen some really interesting games where one team has battered the other. I think Newcastle beat Tottenham like 5 or 6 1. Uh, I think last year Spurs battered them 4 1. It could be absolutely anything. Mm -hmm. um, so far, they've both picked up four points. So if they were to draw this, it's five points, okay? But if either of them can win this, seven start. points, and it's been a good start. I agree. Um, quick little thing to the Tottenham fans. Just let us know in the comments, by the way, your thoughts on getting Coventry away in the Carabao Cup, because we're looking forward to that. We are. We'll be there. Um, as for this game, look, I like Eddie Howe, I like Postacoglu, I think they're both good managers, they're both attacking managers, I'm going to go for a bonus point because I'm going to say Newcastle 3, Tottenham 3. Oh, I thought we were going for the exact same scoreline, I'm going to say 3-2 to Newcastle. Oh, are I'm you? I'm just going to edge them at home, a little bit good for Joe Willock who he's suffered with his injuries, come back, gets a good goal midweek, then gets injured, goes off injured, so hopefully that's a quick recovery for him. But Spurs, they've shown that they're very, very good attacking. But I do struggle with their defence sometimes. It is quite leaky. They just don't seem organised. And that's the thing, they've got some good players there. It's just lapses in concentration here and there. Um, I guess you could say the same with Newcastle as a whole. They're a little bit inconsistent for me. But I think being at home, I'm going to back them. Bit of a goal fest as well, but there is going to be a winner for me. And that's Newcastle, 3-2. There you go. We are both going for a bonus point because remember, five plus goals and you get an extra point if you get it right. And the final game, Sophie, Manchester United versus Liverpool. Save the best till last. Although, it would not surprise me if this finished... No, no. Nil nil. Oh, I'd say no. I'm not predicting that because no, I, don't, I rarely do predict a nil nil. I don't. I don't want that to happen. But sometimes you get a real anti climax. Yeah. Um, let's talk about the two teams. Liverpool have had a good start. Slot has slotted in. Um, two two nil wins so far. Manchester United. They got that win against Fulham, but they conceded a late goal to lose against Brighton. I think Manchester United. I keep saying the same things. They are good when they want to be. They're just not consistent, and that is not a recipe um, for success, as far as I'm concerned. Maybe short-term success, but not long-term. Um, I think Slot is doing well, but has this game come a bit too early, maybe, for him? I just think, I make Liverpool favourites, but because it's at Old Trafford, yeah. I think Man United will be a bit more up for it. Um, I'm going to go down the middle. Oh, I was... I'm going to say Man United 1, Liverpool 1. Do you know, I was going to say the exact same score. You line. can if you want no, to. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to change my mind. I was going to go for a draw because, as you said, I'd fancy Liverpool more so at home. This is going to be a very tough game. And I always say Man United seem to turn it on against Liverpool and against certain teams. Players just seem a little bit more up for it. So... As I said, I was going to go for a draw, but I've changed my mind. Arnie Slot's going to go three for three. Two, Ooh. one, Liverpool. Wow. Back in the boys, yeah. You're going for Liverpool. I'm going for it. I thought you were going to go for Man United, though. Oh, no. God, no. God, <laughs> God no. <laughs> Couldn't go for that. Um, right, well, there you go, guys. Do share your thoughts. I know some Manchester United and Liverpool fans will get very passionate in the comments about oh. this game. Let's be nice. You're welcome to your opinions. If you disagree with ours, that's fine. That's fine. Just yeah. let us know your predictions in a nice way in the comments. Um, but that wraps up the predictions for another week, Sophie. Um, the Premier League will be back in two weeks because we've got an international break. Um, just make sure before then that you have dropped a like. Make sure you have subscribed. We'll try and hit 74,000 subscribers, which would be amazing. And thank you for joining me. Thank you. We will see you in the next one. Take care. Peace out.